Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and welcome to another Excel video. In today's video, we are going to look at creating an index chart. And we're going to create this index chart from cryptocurrency prices for four cryptocurrencies for the year 2020 to date. So that is up to the 20, the nearly the end of November. Now, what I have done so far is I have added in some rich data types. So we see I have the Bitcoin to US dollar, Litecoin, XRP and ETH to US dollar. And from that, I have used the stock history function to pull in the close prices for each of the days that is available between these two dates. Now, if you're not familiar with using rich data types and the stock history function for this, I do have another video and you'll find a link to that below this video. Now, I've pulled in the prices for each of the four coins and then I've charted them. Now, the problem with this chart is that it's impossible to compare the items. It's impossible to compare the trends. The price of Bitcoin, the blue line here, is so much higher than the price of Litecoin, Ripple and Ether that it really should be on a second scale. But then if it was on a second scale, it would be very misleading and it would still be hard to judge the difference in the size of trends. For this reason, an index chart is great and an index chart will allow you to select a base point and plot all of the values against a particular base point so you can quickly see how all of these values compare to each other. Now, I got the idea for this video from a video on data visualization that I was watching on Eager Eyes, and I'll drop a link to that below this as well. It is something that I had included in the Excel curation corner that I wanted to try out. So we are going to index this data. We are going to create an index chart, and you're going to be able to see the difference between using a normal line chart and an index chart. Now, before we really get stuck into this, I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any more of my videos. So let us take our chart and move it up here out of the way for a moment. And what we're going to do is we are going to create some, some more columns. So I'm going to put our date in here. And our date is going to be from the 1st of the 1st, 2020. And I want to fill it all the way down to the end of where we have our actual data from. Now we can pick our base point and our base point is going to be 100. So we're going to start with 100 as our base point. From here, then we can calculate all other points from 100. So this 7,000 is now equal to 100. This 41 is now equal to 100. This 19 is now equal to 100. And the movement is going to be based on this. So we can start creating our next formula. So we're going to take our 100 in our base and we're going to lock this in. So when we pull it, that it'll be locked in going down the rows, but it'll change when we are going across the columns. And we're going to multiply this by our current day's value divided by our previous day's value. And we also have to lock that value in as well. And then we can hit enter. Now, when we pull this across, we will just check by pressing F2 that the values are pulled across properly. We can drag it down once or twice. And again, just double check that our base points all stayed in. So our formula is working fine. We can now fill it down to the end and I could have just sent it down but I did drag it down and now I am going to insert a chart using this data now what we really should do is convert this data into a table before we put it into a chart that way it is a dynamic table and when we update our table will update and our chart will also update from here we can now insert a chart and I'm going to insert a line chart and we can drag this and make it a little bit bigger. 
So see how much easier it is now to actually see the difference in the patterns and in the trends. In our first chart, because the price of Bitcoin is so much higher than the other coins that we selected, this is the dominant line of the chart and you can't even see the values of the other, let alone understand any type of trend. However, with our indexed chart, we can now see the movement and scale in line with each other. Ether seems to have had a great time in terms of price movement over and above that of the price of Bitcoin. But you see down in the last few days here that XRP has really taken off compared to all of the other coins that we have looked at here. Now, what you need to make sure is when you select your base point. So over here on our axis, and I am going to format our axis here. What you might need to do is have a minus value in our axis. So you could have a minus value of 50, just so it brings it down a little bit further. Then you need to format your dates as well because the position of these now is not great. So let's rotate them. So let's quickly go back over the calculation that we done for our indexing. We started with the live data that we have, and you can get the data in whatever way that you want. I use the stock history function and I use the data types, the stock data types to pull in actual pricing. I then gave the first date a base price of 800. And then from here, we calculated the percentage change as a base of 100 on each of the values, which puts them all in line together and allows us to have the same starting point. But the percentage change is shown very, very quickly between all of the charts. The trends are very easily identifiable and comparable against each other. So that is index charts. Of course, you can go ahead and do some better formatting than what I have done there. But it was just the whole principle of index charts that I wanted to share with you in this video today. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I do hope that you will do so now. And I hope that you will also consider sharing this video across your social profiles. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.